What a year for Canada, for the world, and for the rebel. And we covered it all. We were one of the only news media in Canada who correctly predicted Donald Trump's win in 2016, and in 2017, we covered him more closely and more fairly than anyone else in Canada, starting with his inauguration in Washington, which we attended, including the riots by Antifa street protesters. We were on the receiving end of a dose of that kind of violence too. Dion Buse, an NDP extremist in Edmonton, one of those Harvey Weinstein style male feminists, actually punched our Alberta Bureau Chief, Sheila gunn Reed, just because she's a conservative. I'm pleased to report that Buse was arrested, charged and convicted of his crime, and his civil trial is scheduled for the new year. But it was a reminder that our ideological opponents don't believe in debating us, they believe in silencing us. That made us start to take security more seriously, which we needed to do anywhere there are leftists. Canadian professional protesters, when they see a rebel reporter, physically attack. No other media faces that kind of violence. It's a deliberate tactic. Inflict costs on us, both financial and psychological. But here's the thing, it didn't stop us, it didn't work. Take the United Nations, they officially banned us from covering their global warming conference in Germany. So what? We went anyways. And Sheila did the best reporting of any journalist there. Even fun stuff, like showing how the whole global warming conference was actually powered by giant diesel burning generators. We did lots of serious journalism, like when we reported from the Israeli town just a few kilometers from Gaza, where Hamas terrorist rockets are deliberately fired into Israeli civilian areas, and residents have just seconds to react to warning sirens, where every bus shelter is also a bomb shelter. Or when we reported from the Christian towns in Iraq that had recently been liberated from ISIS terrorists, the ethnic cleansing done to the Christians, including Nazi-style tactics of smashing grave sites and torching churches. We'll have a special documentary on the persecution of Christians early in the new year. We did reporting and commentary, and we also took action, like our rally of nearly 3,000 unemployed oil and gas workers in Edmonton opposing the carbon tax. That was right before the new year, 2017. Boy, Rachel Notley hated that protest, and so did most of the rest of the media. That was when we first started to see a shift, a new dynamic. The other media in Canada started to truly, deeply hate us, just as much as the Antifa rioters did. I don't know why. I mean, you'd think we're nothings, we're nobodies, we're a small news website, but I think rival journalists hated the fact that we weren't part of the same group think as them, we're independent and they couldn't keep us out. Well, who cares about them? They can do stories about Justin Trudeau's socks. We'll do our own stories. Sometimes we have fun. Like when David Menzies drove around Toronto with a giant jumbotron truck calling for Bill Morneau to be fired for corruption. We do a lot of billboards because it's proof that we're not just online, we're real life. We were the only media in Canada to take the threat of the M103 Islamophobia censorship motion seriously. Other media either ignored it or hadn't heard of it or were too worried about being called racist to even mention the news. We had a thousand people gather, including many new Canadians who had fled from Muslim countries, to oppose the Sharia censorship here. It's not always events and campaigns. We cover the news every day from the other side of the story. We've produced more than 7,600 videos since we launched. Our viewers have watched well over a billion minutes on YouTube alone. So we're spreading the word. Not just here in Canada, overseas too. Tommy Robinson became a media star with us, speaking truth about terrorism and just as worrying the slow Islamification of British society. We got involved in campaigns like the case of Chelsea Wright. In 2017, Mark Latham joined us in Australia, calling out the Liberals there. We collected petitions for big and small causes. We've done that a lot, and then we keep in touch with petition signers on the issues they care about. That's how we grow our audience. And sometimes we do actual charity work, too, like when we raise more than $200,000 for the two children of Christopher Spear, the U.S army medic killed by Omar Khadr. The rest of the media in Canada were fawning over Khadr and supported paying him $10.5 million. It was a good year for the rebel, but it was also a tough year. 2017 was the year that Silicon Valley tech companies decided to attack conservative media like ours. YouTube cut off advertising money to conservative channels, including ours. Twitter censored our journalists. Facebook shut down our advertising account. Tech companies are actually worse than a government censor because they're 100% secretive and you have no appeal. It's tough, but we're still alive. 
thanks to our viewers' crowdfunding. We're proud of that, and we've taken a maximum transparency approach to our finances. You can see down to the dollar how much we've raised and where it's spent at therebel.media slash trust. We've had some good buys. Some of our talent was so good, huge companies hired them away, like Gavin McInnes. We just couldn't outbid the billionaire who hired him away. Other teammates went back to school, like our friend Holly. Others left us over editorial differences. That happens. It's fine. That's the nature of the media business, especially with rebellious personalities. But we keep finding amazing new conservative talent out there who join our band of happy warriors, like John Cardillo, the former NYPD cop who covers our politics and Blue Lives Matter beat for us. And our new website focused on campus extremism called Campus Unmasked. And early in the new year, we'll have two exciting new announcements to make also. So that's our year. Thousands of videos, millions of views, and all 100% independent, not a dime of government money. It's why we're the only independent voice in Canada and why we're popular in other countries too. Just last week, the Hill Times newspaper did a survey of MPs and staff on Parliament Hill asking them which journalists they would most like to silence. That was their word, silence. And by far the number one answer was us, was me and the rebel. Isn't that funny? We're barely a tenth of one percent as big as the CBC in terms of budget. But the left just hates us. They want to silence us. Isn't that the best praise we could earn? And they haven't silenced us yet, but some are trying. We're facing a case of lawfare. An extremist anti-Israel group has filed a politically charged lawsuit against us that will inflict costs on us and that will burn up our time and our money. But we're still alive. We have to be. For all our flaws and for all of my flaws, imagine if the rebel wasn't around. Imagine if no one was here to lead the protests against the carbon tax or M103. Imagine if no one would tell the other side of the story on everything from Omar Khadr to mass Syrian migration to the UN to global warming. Imagine if all there was was the CBC and the Globe and Mail and CNN and the Washington Post and leftist news websites. It's tough now with Trudeau and Notley and Wynne. Imagine if they were completely unopposed in the media. I mean, Andrew Scheer and Jason Kenney and Brad Wall have few enough conservatives in the media as allies as it is. So that's how we end 2017. We're in a hard fight, but we're still alive and kicking and fighting like hell every day with new shows and new ideas coming. Oh, and our app will be ready next week too. So that's my annual report. You tell me, is the rebel worth having around? I ask you that because you're the only reason we are around. You're the only reason we do it. If you don't think we're necessary, we won't be able to convince you by now. But if you do think we're necessary, more necessary than ever maybe, if we're ever going to get this country back on track, then please consider a year-end contribution to help us out. Please go to standwiththerebel.com if you stand with us. And please hit our tip jar with five bucks or five hundred or or sign up for our premium shows that's just eight dollars a month that's a great way to help us plus you get access to all of our shows that are behind our paywall unlike the CBC we get no money from the government only from you our viewers it's what keeps us honest on behalf of our whole team thank you for your support and good luck to all of us in 2018 we need your help if you're willing to help us please go to standwiththerebel.com.